reflecting on this reading today, I, I couldn't help but be struck by this idea that we could be totally about God, prophesying in his name, casting out demons and doing miracles, and still the Lord, in this instance sounding kind of like a bouncer, will tell us, no, I don't know you. Get out of here. Away with you, you evil doer. You know, I didn't think of Christ as often having that kind of brimstone preaching style. <laughs> but as we move through Matthew, I hear more of it. But I find it actually quite promising, this message. Because in a way, he's speaking to things we all already know. We know that in the history of Christianity, there's much pain, a lot of groupthink, we're the only ones right, everyone else is going to hell. In fact, you can kind of interpret some of the scriptures that way if you really want to, but you don't have to. Indeed, when we look at Christ's words a little bit more broadly, throughout the scriptures, even throughout just Matthew, we start to notice a kind of tendency, this return to form, shall we say, a return to who we are, in a way. This call, this invitation to return to God within. God within. So it's an interesting mistake, you could say, but maybe quite on the money, to say that we are called to turn to God within. And indeed, in this reading, he says, unless you do the Lord's will, the will of my Father, God's will, I'll send you away. And then he says, and if you don't act on this, and he has this whole other parable that's very interesting as well. And so my reaction is, oh yes, I'll, I'll act on this. But what to do after that decision? What's God's will? What's God's will? You could open to any place in the Bible and maybe say you found God's will. That could be a way to do it if you're called to it. But honestly, when you look at this core message that Christ keeps returning to, I can't help but think God's will is, of course, following this invitation back to our center, back to our heart. I think sometimes we're called to go deeper and part of us doesn't want to go deeper. Of course it doesn't. It's, it's the, the surface mind. It has its own business to take care of. It wants you to think what it's thinking is so important. In fact, we often identify with it. I'm thinking this. This is what I care about right now. And yet Christ's teachings, in a way, help to shed light on a broader aspect of our being that doesn't need belief to know. It's not worried about getting everything right, in fact. The things we think are so important, the things I'm so self-conscious about, worried about, that's not really me. There's something broader with the peace of the Lord inherent to it. And sometimes we don't even relate, it, relate to it spiritually. I think that's part of the reason why there's so many religions in the world, but when you really dive into them, they seem to share a core message of returning to our natural state, returning to God. But unfortunately, often we're in that outward mode of being, even in religion. We say, Lord, Lord. We put on the trappings of religion, and we think that's good. We're in the mode of mind, you could say. You could say it's all mind, but we'll just call this aspect of being mind. The mode of overthinking. And we, we don't know any better. Often we lose the thread of Scripture for some reason, even those who open it every day. 
something we all have to watch out for, losing the thread of hearts, of love, compassion. It's not always the most popular thing to go deeper, to call for openness and compassion. There's something about human identity that gravitates to something a little bit more standardized, a little bit more, I don't know, a little more shallow, a little bit more structured, you could say, more able to keep people in line, tell them exactly what to do with their lives. And yet I don't see Christ's message as doing that. His disciples were caught eating on a Sunday, picking actually, from a field on a Sunday. And they were called out for it. How dare you let your disciples pick wheat or whatever on a Sunday? That's against the law. Of course, Christ says the Sabbath is made for humanity, not humanity for the Sabbath. Sometimes we invert that without knowing it. We invert our very beingness by over-investing in that outward thinking, over-investing in every thought, every want that arises, our ambition. We think it's good ambition. It could be very good ambition, to save the world even. But unless we are attuned to the core of what we are, the heart, the Christ, the Krishna, God, something beyond words, so unless we become more attuned and allow God's will to flow, then we're just still in the mode of mind, falling over ourselves to get things done. And here we hear Christ say, that doesn't matter. To me. It doesn't matter. You could have done miracles in my name. I'm pretty sure if I started doing miracles in God's name, I think I was on a pretty good track. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think I made it. Wow. Just healed these people or whatever it is. You know, it's interesting that he goes there. It could be a miracle of form and function in some way, whatever it is, I think maybe it's right to take inspiration from things like that. But Christ is saying, no, but it has to be deeper. It has to be deeper. It's less about the word God, more about knowing God's will. So what is God's will to you? How could you uncover God's will? I think it takes many forms for each of us. Sometimes in my past, I've seen like signs, you know, I noticed signs. But I think the more peaceful my mind gets, things just happen. And I just do things. I just speak. And indeed, the less I'm in my head in general, the more I can get done Maybe surprising things are getting done. Things I wouldn't expect, but still good work. And Christ has this tendency to shake us out of slumber, out of what we think is the norm. I don't know why we think that after 2,000 years of so much war and hate, that we're somehow incorporating everything Christ taught. I think it's maybe natural. People have been preaching from the Bible for so long. But I think we've missed it. We haven't allowed ourselves to go deep enough because the part that often picks up the book, wants to preach, wants to teach, wants to control, wants to whatever, is not the one the Bible is going to speak to. It's that Lord inside it's God. And so it is kind of a strange message today. 
that the thing that we often identify as is not really us. And so let's take a moment and open our hearts, even if we don't know how, just opening ourselves to our natural state, the will of God, the light of love within. And letting it be our prayer today, if it so be it, that we will be righteous in the eyes of God, that we may identify, in fact, with the eyes of God, with God within, and under-identify, under-invest, release our investment, that is, in identity, in form, in our habitual thinking and our judgment. Even as they continue forward, as they go, as they will. Allowing our minds to quiet. Because who are they speaking to? They're speaking to our interests. They're speaking to our identity. Our arrogance, our ego. the knower in our heads. But that really is in us. Instead, let us enjoy the peace of God, the Lord of love, no distance from who we are. The idea of it may be distant, but God himself, herself, no distance.